Beyond the Game, brought to you by Turkish Airlines. Formula One season is almost upon us and it looks like we're in for a treat. Mercedes will be setting the standard, Ferrari are already on their back heels and Red Bull look to be up for the fight. But with the coronavirus threatening to take the sport off the grid, will Formula One make it to the finishing line in one piece? I'm Samantha Johnson and welcome to this special edition of Beyond the Game. We're less than a week away from the opener in Melbourne. Now, last season, Lewis Hamilton became only the second man in history to win six world titles. And now he has Michael Schumacher's seven championships within his sights. But standing in his way are the usual suspects of Ferrari and Red Bull. Now, the struggle of trying to beat Mercedes has been one of the sport's constants for the best part of a decade. But what's new for this season? Here's Taylor Duman with a look ahead to 2020 in Formula One. It was only in December that the Formula One season ended with Mercedes dominating, making it six titles in a row for the Germans. And just a few months later, we're already back in Melbourne for another year of the crown jewel of racing. The build-up to 2020 has come with no major rule changes and not a lot of substantial driver changes either. Though in Barcelona, the Mercs pulled out a trick that no one saw coming. All the talk this morning has been about the new Mercedes trombone steering steering wheel device. So the question is, what is going on there? It's called dual axis steering, and because the Germans dominated preseason testing, other F1 teams are scrambling to replicate the technology. Mercedes, though, aren't giving anything away. It's an innovative idea that we've had and brought to the track, and it just is a thing that allows the driver an extra dimension of control on the steering system. Why we do it, exactly how it works, all of those things, we'd rather keep them to ourselves. But we hope it's a an innovation that will bring us some advantage through the season. The system doesn't only help with steering, it also helps drivers change the alignment of the car's front wheels and better control the heat of their tires during the race, which means they'll be faster. But don't worry, the DAS or DAS or whatever it's called isn't here to stay. From the one's governing body is outlawing the tech for 2021. For now though, it's looking like Mercedes might have yet again cracked the code to another F1 championship. You could say Lewis Hamilton's journey to history has never looked this smooth. The British driver is on the verge of equaling Michael Schumacher's seven titles, a record once seen as unreachable. Ferrari, though, have had a much tougher road over the past quite a few seasons. It's been 13 years since the Prancing Horses last tasted F1 glory. But as always, there was maximum hype at the car unveiling. It's uh, very radical in terms of uh, you know, the uh, uh, inventions, especially under the bodywork. So um, it's very tight in terms of packaging, and I think it's a big step forward. But there's also concerns about whether the new design is fast enough to pass Hamilton and company. Red Bull, meanwhile, seem like the biggest contenders for Mercedes' throne. With a year's worth of Honda Power experience under their belt, Max Verstappen thinks Red Bull have found just what it takes to make things interesting in 2020. Throughout the first season, we improved the engine a lot, um, step by step. You know, Honda gave us the updates, and um, yeah, it was a good, good starting point for, for this year. And um, yeah, we just tried to keep on working, tried to keep improving the engine and uh, hopefully we'll be competitive from the start. And then I think it can be uh, a really interesting and fun year. 
And then you have the rest of the grid. Some would argue that without leveling the playing field financially, the big three, who are also the richest, will just keep on winning. Next year's regulations are promising to fix that with a cost cap, but until then, for the other seven teams, 2020 will likely end up being the race to be the best of the rest. It's not going to be easy, mainly because uh, uh, we have very tough competition from Racing Point to Rosso Renault at the end of the year. It was not easy to beat them on track and it would require a very big step on, on our performance to try to get rid of them, you know. But in the competition for biggest preseason storyline, one issue is far out ahead. The coronavirus outbreak. The coronavirus outbreak has now hit the world of sport as well. Any race cancellations really are really quite extreme. Formula One's governing body stands ready to take any action required. We already know the Chinese Grand Prix has been postponed, but with the virus starting to spread faster outside China, more races could be at risk, especially in Europe. Now, some sports leagues are trying to minimize the risk of infection by playing without any supporters, and that could also become F1's reality very soon especially when this season's calendar is filled with stops that already have confirmed infections. We're, we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure. I mean, you know, if a team is prevented from entering a country, we can't have a race. Um, not a Formula 1 World Championship race anyway, because that would be unfair. Um, obviously, if a team makes its own choice not to go to a race, that's, you know, that's their decision. Formula 1 is on the verge of a new era. Big changes next year are expected to reignite much needed competitiveness the sport has been missing for a long time. But with the cloud of uncertainty that is the coronavirus outbreak hanging over F1's head, the season opener in Melbourne is as far as anyone can see into the 2020 season. Right, and luckily for us, we're joined by the Formula One expert, Jason Tartanjolu, to look ahead to the new season, the 2020 season. So, Jason, as usual, thank you very much for joining You're us welcome. on Beyond the Game. Uh, let's start with the issues surrounding uh, the coronavirus and how it's affecting the sport. Now, we've already seen the mm -hmm. Chinese Grand Prix uh, suspended. Mm -hmm. How likely is it that we'll see other races go the same way? I mean, considering Chinese Grand Prix is the fourth race on the calendar, it's been cancelled already, as you said. And um, the, as, as the uh, Formula One officials actually um, announced that the first three races that go ahead, the next Grand Prix after that, the European Grand Prix, is the, is the Dutch Grand Prix. And, you know, we haven't heard any cases from, from, from that country, at least. So I have no idea. I mean, it's scary that we have to talk about these th kind of things for, for the Formula One sport in general, for any sport. But, you know, if, if they don't take action regarding, you know, finding a cure or doing anything, you know, to, to actually spread, uh, stop the spreading, then, you know, we could look at maybe more races being cancelled. We don't know. But for now, on at least the first three races that go ahead, we should be happy for that. OK, well, if more races are cancelled, mm -hmm. can you see it actually undermining the championship? Well, the teams have to attend races for the races to happen. That's number one rule. And the, only, the biggest problem we have right now is the logistics side. You know, because people have to travel. Let's say you're going to Australia, you're going to travel either from Bangkok, Singapore, or any of those, let's say, you know, um, Eastern countries. So, and these countries are dangerous right now in terms of, you know, th there is a potential going on. There's, there's, there's a threat of this virus. So, in any case, wherever you're going to go, the logistics side is what's worrying most, most teams. And when you think about Italy, like you've got the Alfa Torre and the Ferrari team are from, coming from Italy, and Italy is, you know, a hot spot when you talk about, when you, when you think about it right now for this virus. And, you know, that's the biggest concern. If they can sort out the logistics side, then people are going to attend races. Well, we've seen the virus actually affect other mm -hmm. sporting events mm -hmm. as well. Look, have we seen anything like this affect Formula One before? I'm not too sure, not that I recall, but I remember in 2012-13 there was a SARS virus again in, in China, but they still did actually do the 2014 Chinese Grand Prix. OK, well, one person who hopes that the season will go smoothly and as planned is Lewis Hamilton, who is gearing up for a potentially record equaling seventh Grand Prix title. Lewis Hamilton is on the brink of something special. He could soon tie a record that many thought was unattainable not too long ago. The year was 2003 and Michael Schumacher had just won his sixth Formula One World Championship driver's title. At the time, this was an incredible feat as Schumacher eclipsed Juan Manuel Fangio's five titles, which the Argentines set in 1957. Considering it took nearly five decades to catch Fangio, it would be fair to assume Schumacher's seven would hold for some time. 
Fast forward 16 years and six-time F1 world champ Hamilton is on the verge of equaling the German driver's record. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to try and win some more. It's not so easy. And each year it gets harder and harder for us as the competition gets better and stronger. There are some young drivers eager to veer Hamilton off course this racing season. Red Bull's Max Verstappen and Ferrari's Charles Leclerc have their eyes on the top prize. But the 35-year-old Brit is up for the challenge, and he knows how to win. In fact, the only driver to beat him in the last six years is now retired teammate Nico Rosberg, who did so in 2016. So if history is any indicator, Hamilton's biggest challenger may come from his own Mercedes teammate. Last month, Valtteri Bottas set the fastest lap time on the final day of Formula One testing. For sure you always have to raise the bar, uh, even though it must be my best year ever. Um, I felt there's still lots of margin to improve in many areas, many weaknesses of mine, and try to make my strengths even, even better. As the F1 embarks on its 70th season this Sunday, Hamilton hopes to drive his way into the history books, setting his sights on lucky number seven. Abdel Halim, TRT World. So Hamilton is on course for a record equaling seventh title, but can he do it? Uh, Jason, without sounding too repetitive, what do the other two teams have to do to stop him and stop Mercedes? Well, they've got to get quicker first thing. I mean, yeah. let's, let's face it, again, to be, to be repetitive, you know, the silver hours are the fastest, uh, they're the favourites, but they're still they could still make mistakes, you know, they could still lose it every now if, if it's somewhere because you know, either a pit stop or, or a mechanical failure. I mean, during these, during these tests in, in Barcelona last week and the week before, they had their first mechanical failure. We haven't seen that for a while when you think about it. And so, you know, people start thinking whether they're actually, you know, beatable, you know, when you, it, it, in that sense. But, you know, they have to step up their game, simple. And I really believe that this year, Red Bull will have a bit of an upper hand compared to the Ferrari, and I think there will be times that the Red Bull will be quicker than the Silver Arrow as well. Okay, so we're actually going to see a shake-up in a season for once. I think we should do for, for once. When you think about it, when you, when you, when you consider the last five years of, of the dominance of, of, since the Turbo era began with the Silver Arrow, and like, we've got to see something different, simple. And I, and I think Red Bull can do it this year. Okay, well, let's focus on Hamilton a little bit more. And if he does go on to win his seventh uh, Grand Prix mm -hmm. title, do you think he should stay with Mercedes or do you think he should go to Ferrari just to solidify his his legacy? Or should he quit? We don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think with Hamilton, you might think, yeah. you know what, I've got seven, I might yeah. want to go to eight just to make sure that everybody knows that I am the greatest. Well, but why not move to somewhere like Ferrari? They've got the history, they've got we, the prestige. I know, we, I, we've always heard um, Hamilton not being bothered about numbers and like I, I just enjoy the sport. He's always playing that, that role, that, that kind of thing. And, uh, and, and I know he's got such a big bond with, with the Mercedes, obviously, as a team because they provided him with a winning car for so many years. You know he's done all this. He's done all this winning his championship with it with that team. He, they, they've given him so much. But would he want to go to Ferrari? I'm not too sure. Would I? I'm not too sure if I would want to. I mean, if I want to win the eighth and I've got a guaranteed seat that could, or a car that would get me the eighth title, I'd probably stick to it. But maybe he just wants to be a bit more. Um, let's say have a bit of excitement. I'm well, let's sure. focus on uh, Ferrari. <laughs> uh, what do you make of their chances? this season they've been on the back foot yeah of late well they haven't been the quickest in testing and they've had this engine you know issue considering that it's not been legal the last year and they've you know, obviously you know had some um, you know settlements going on and all that kind of stuff they people say they won't have the same advantage this year we don't know but all in all I think the, the, the rivalry between Leclerc and, and Vettel is going to be interesting this year because you know Leclerc was the, the rookie last year and Vettel was the boss, but now things can change and I, I think Vettel has to really step up his game to actually you know, be as competitive or even faster and you know, show his dominance against the, the young gun Leclerc. Well, someone who has been very vocal is Max mm -hmm. Verstappen and he thinks he can actually get the better mm -hmm. of Hamilton if he's given the mm -hmm. right card. What do you make of his views? Is he actually been a bit too confident? Mm -hmm. I mean, can you actually ever see him being a world champion? Uh, Verstappen, from what I've read, he's very comfortable in the car this year. Much more comfortable than last year. He said the car is more predictable. Obviously, that gives a big confidence boost, you know, when you drive. And, you know, when you talk about confidence, Max has got loads of it. He, he has such a such huge self-belief that he is unstoppable. He's the best. And let's face it, he's 
incredibly quick. He, he relies on that. He's incredibly talented. He relies on that, and he's got a you know a big amount of self-belief. He he knows he's he what he is, and and I think on a good day with a good car. He's unstoppable, and he's he's going to be a champion. From all from everything I've just you know listed, he's a future champion. Full stop. Okay, great to hear that. But one thing is for certain is you know Hamilton is still the man to beat. But don't take my word for it. Beyond the game caught up with the former Williams driver Paul Duresta, and he believes that Lewis is just unstoppable. Gearing up for the start of another F1 season. Ready for it. And what better way to get an insight than to be given a hot lap around Silverstone by a man who knows his way around an F1 circuit. Paul DeResta has seen fellow Brit Lewis Hamilton dominate the sport in recent seasons. Is he expecting that to continue? It'd be hard to write Mercedes off, given their dominance in this turbo hybrid era, um, where they finished last year and certainly um, the speculation around um, what was going to happen uh, with Ferrari going into this year. Of course, Mercedes looked very strong at Barcelona in winter testing. Uh, I just hope that Red Bull and Ferrari are holding a little bit back uh, and not giving too much away. But at the same time, um, if it was a betting man, you'd have to say, um, you know, the way Lewis, the form he's on, and, uh, you know, that, that goal that he's got to try and emulate Michael Schumacher's record. This Silverstone circuit has been a happy hunting ground for Hamilton. Not only is he chasing a seventh world title, but victory on this track in July would also be a record extending seventh British Grand Prix win. But who's best placed to challenge him this season? Probably his teammate Valtteri Bottas, uh, but one to one races when they've got the package together, Max Verstappen. And I think it's the, the person that Lewis fears most. And he has openly said that in press conferences, you know, Max, he's unaware of what Max is going to do. They had a couple of battles last year, it was nice to see. Um, it would be nice to see that go season long because I think in this generation of Formula 1 it's going to end at the end of this year and then we've got something new to look forward to in the future. Well I've just come back in from that uh, two laps with Paul de Resta out on the Formula 1 car on the Silverstone track and to think I was here watching the Grand Prix back in July and now to actually be out there on the track in a race car was just an incredible experience and I actually just want to go straight back out there and do it all again. Whilst many in the sport expect Hamilton to do it all again, the 2020 season should be a closely fought battle further down the grid. I think fascinating battle in the, the midfield and certainly racing point of um, uh, put the cat amongst the pigeons. Uh, and they look, uh, they look to have a very competitive car. So I think it's going to be a fascinating battle midfield with uh, McLaren, racing point, Renault. Renault look reasonable. So I think there's, there's a lot of um, strong competition in the midfield. With teams often keeping their powder dry during pre-season testing, it won't be until they line up in Melbourne that we'll have a real idea of the state of play. And with four consecutive second place finishes in Australia, will Lewis Hamilton be leading the way? Now, it feels a bit harsh to talk about this, but the rest of the field, or F1.5, as the fans on the internet like to call it, are still quite away from competing for the top three spots. Why are you laughing? Anyway, McLaren finished as the best of the rest, but the English team were still almost 300 points off from third place Red Bull last season. But at least they beat out Renault. Four DNFs from Daniel Ricciardo didn't make life easy for the French. Meanwhile, Toro Rosso, now Alfa Tori's driver swap with Red Bull, didn't make much of a difference in 2019. They were pretty much on level with Racing Point and Alfa Romeo. Haas was nowhere as good as they were in 2018. And as for Williams, well, they only managed to get one point. OK, so I slightly feel a bit sorry for uh, the rest of the field, but realistically, what do the others have to do to catch the top three? Well, saying that, I mean, like the, the pink Mercedes, as they say, you know, the, um, the racing point has actually stepped up their, their pace and you know, they're very quick um, during testing. So that was a bit of a surprise for the rest of the field. But, you know, all in all, when you think about it, you know, um, Toro Rosso, um, McLaren, racing point, they're probably going to have their own race, as we've seen, you know, in the last few years. But I just want to see Williams do better. <laughs> Seriously, I, I mean, I really believe that they can do better this year and because you know such an iconic team with such amazing history and they deserve to do better and I, and I really hope and I really think they're actually gonna you know score more points this year so fingers crossed for them. Well what's actually gone wrong with Williams? 
Well, I mean, I don't. In wanna, your opinion, I, I'm not going to, you know, comment on the drivers because both drivers are good, and Russell's a very, you know, he's a protege. He's 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 got future. He he was in the Formula Two champion, so you can't really, you know, uh, discuss Russell's, um, you know, talent in any sense. And I, and I really think, you know, what they've probably got from last year, they're gonna they've put this year, and that's pre, that's that pretty much shows how much improvement they've made. And they're, they're quick. They're much quicker now, you know, compared to how they were um, the previous year's testing. So. I, I'm, I'm hopeful for Williams, let's see. We'll see okay. what happens. I'm glad you are. Yeah. Hope, others are feeling hopeful as well. <laughs> but what about the new regulations, mm -hmm. the 2021 Ooh, yeah. uh, regulations? Mm -hmm. How's that going to affect everything? Oh, it's a clean, clean piece of paper when you think about it. It's, it's a blank piece of paper. People have to, you know, reconsider a lot of things. The aero package, the, you know, the tyres themselves are they're, they're hugely different now because you've got 18 inch rims and the whole tyre uh, dynamics are changing. So, you know, when you, at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're designing a new, competing new car, but saying that, you know, teams with big budgets, obviously, who've got a lot more resources will have obviously the advantage of, you know, developing, trying, testing, R&D and stuff and all, and all. But at the end of the day, it's the brains that make a difference. And there's always going to be that, that smart one in a small team that will find something that will make them stand out. And the rest of the field. I'll give you the final word on this. How do you see the 2020 season panning out? He's going to be one, two, three. I think it'll be again um, Hamilton, uh, Bottas, and then Verstappen. Okay, great. We'll see. Well, Jason, as usual, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Beyond the Game. But before we go, we're going to hear from a motorsports legend and someone who knows their way around a Formula One paddock is the two time world champion, Emerson. Fittipaldi and the Brazilian recently sat down with Robin Adams to get his thoughts on the season ahead. Emerson Fittipaldi, the 2020 Formula One season is nearly upon us. What are you most excited to see? Well, I think it'll be a very interesting uh, season. First, McLaren's full recover, much better performance. I think it'll be interesting to see Lando Norris with Carlos Sainz racing against each other. Ferrari will be very interesting, Sebastian Vettel and Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton trying to get another world championship and that's a, it's a big challenge. Uh, Red Bull Verstappen is going to run strong, now they have the Grand Prix in Holland, uh, the, the whole country will be watching Verstappen this year. Uh, he was, end of last year Red Bull improved a lot, you know, I think it will be another very tough competition to win the championship. You, you do make it sound though like it's a bit of a level playing field, but uh, I think Formula One fans will tell you this is Mercedes going to run away with the season again. Is that at all possible? I, you know, it's, uh, if you look at the last six months of last year, uh, they, they had a lot of challenges from Ferrari. You know, the Red Bull improved a lot. You know, Verstappen was running much stronger. I think the Honda engine was better. Is getting better. Honda tradition always made very good engines, and I think they improve for this year. Should be a good challenge. Is there enough young talent coming through? In your opinion, though? Yes, yes, a lot of a lot of new. You know, uh, if you look Verstappen, Leclerc, now Lando Norris, is extremely talented from England. Uh, they race kart each other. They are they're very good. It's always good to see the new blood into sport, any sport. And I think motor race needs this recycle and it'll be interesting to see. Does Charles Leclerc have what it takes to be a Formula One world champion, do you think? I, I uh, looking the last two years, yes. And looking his record since he raced karting, all the formulas before, uh, I would say Leclerc, Verstappen and even Lando Norris what I call world champion material. They would be world champion material. Unveiled these very bold, very ambitious plans to be carbon neutral by 2030. You know, it's a challenge for Formula One because the world's changing. We're talking about electrical cars, new energy, you know, hybrids, everything, you know, the planet's changing. The, the, in five years from now, when you see a Corvette V8, a Mercedes V8, taking a kid to school, the new generation is going to say, mm, the smell of fuel, this noise, should not be here, this car. And this has happened the next five years for sure. And Formula One has to follow that pattern. 
because the world's changing. You know, I live in a place, I drive a golf car uh, on, on my city in Key Biscayne, Florida. You, you are allowed. I have a licensed golf car. It's a small town. And um, I was taking my young daughter, nine years old, to, to the public school. And the head of us was a Corvette with four exhaust. We're on the electric golf car. <laughs> the smell, she looked to me. Daddy, something's wrong here, no? That's changed, it's a good question. The new energy. We have to look for the planet, everybody's concerned. And Formula One has to follow and will follow. It'll be a challenge, but it'll be difficult. Good to have you on the program. Thank you very much to have me. It's always an honor to be with you. So it's lights out and away we go. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Beyond the Game. Now, if you want to see any of our features and exclusive interviews again, make sure you go onto our YouTube channel, trtworld.com, or you can follow me on Instagram at Miss underscore Sam Johnson. From all of us here in Istanbul, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you very soon. Beyond the Game, brought to you by Turkish Airlines.